Oh, I hear somebody's. That happens on my phone too. <laughs> that was my alarm for the meeting. Very good. Well, welcome everybody. We have our Power Talk Toastmasters online Zoom meeting tonight. And our club president, Lori, will call us to order. Hello, welcome fellow Toastmasters. I was just thinking two weeks ago, we were all together in the same room and what a difference two weeks makes that we are now in a Zoom meeting, although this was previously scheduled, we thought, hey, Zoom meetings allow us an opportunity for additional speakers to, uh, to, to be able to share their messages and to perhaps open up our club to additional membership. Little did we know that this might be the way we meet uh, in the near future. So I'm excited to see all of you because it's, it's, uh, it's been an interesting time to try to connect to one another. So it's great to have live video of each of you and to be able to see faces and connect with you in this way. I'm, I'm really excited that we are able to do this and we'll be doing this in the near future as a way to continue to connect with one another. I also want to introduce Mary as our guest today. Thank you so much for joining us from Illinois. What a, what a great thing social media is to make our world a little bit smaller and to connect us with, with new folks. I hope you enjoy the meeting, Mary. This is a specialized club. This is a club that for professional and aspiring professional speakers. So the speakers you will see tonight are pretty advanced and they do this uh, mostly as, as their living. So you will, um, you're in for a treat tonight. Good. So welcome, thank you so much for coming. And I think I saw a couple of additional folks were, were in or, yeah, there's a Lisa. Oh, Lisa. yeah. Oh, Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for inviting me. Of so, course. Lisa, I have, I know Lisa from years ago. How did you find out about the meeting, Lisa? I saw you posted. All right. Well, great. <laughs> nice and where are you zooming in from, Lisa? Apple Valley, Minnesota. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I think there's a couple of other people in the meeting here so uh, that are not necessarily identified. I don't know if they're just additional folks that are in watching a speech or if they're just joining us, but at any rate, welcome to you all. This will be an exciting meeting and to get the meeting started, I will turn this over to our Toastmaster of the evening, Diane Windinglen. Thank you, Lori. We're going to start out with a few meeting tips and maybe practice a few things because I know we're all getting better at online meetings, but it never hurts to make sure that we're all on the same page. So if you haven't already done this, you're going to want to eliminate distractions. For example, mute your cell phone and I have to close my door, otherwise my cat <laughs> will walk all over the place. And that is a lesson I learned the hard way. So if you need to deal with those distractions now, that would be great. When you aren't talking, it's best to mute yourself. So everybody, I want you to practice muting yourself. You should, if you're on your desktop, see a place. If you scroll at the top of your video, you should see a button for mute, or even on the bottom, you should see a microphone and you can click mute. So let me see everybody try to mute themselves. So Therese, you turned off your video. Can you actually mute yourself too? I don't think so. You don't think so. So one thing I can do, if somebody makes a lot of noise for some reason, I can actually mute you myself but I'll unmute you for now. Is my and video back on? Your video is back on. I'm gonna have to play around with this on an iPad sometime to see what it looks like on an iPad. So Lisa, were you able to figure out how to mute yourself? Oh, you are muted. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've been on, the, on a few Zoom calls before, so this helps. Okay, great, yes. A lot of people have now. Diane? Yes? On an iPad, again, if you touch the screen, you should have uh, at the top 
um, stop video, which I suspect is what you've got, got there. Oh, it had a, never mind. I have it, a mute. No, I have a mute though. I see it right there. I'm going to go mute right now. You did it. All right. Okay. And now it's back. Okay. So you will want to use the chat box for individual or group messages. And we're all going to practice that now. On my screen, I have a toolbar. And where they have the more box is where I can see a chat. And your device may look differently. So everybody open up the chat and send a message to everybody. It could just be like hi or something like that. And now my keyboard isn't working. That's pretty funny. Okay. And somebody has background noise, so it'd be great to mute yourself if you've got the background noise. All right. Has anybody not found the chat box or where to, to chat? If you haven't, you can't send me a message. <laughs> you go like, ah, like you don't know what you're doing. And then, oh, Kent, you couldn't find it? You're just kidding. Okay. I found it. I just don't know how to tell people that I found it. Well, so if you have the chat box, there will be a place where it says two, and then it probably yeah, says everyone, and yeah, you I... type your message right under that. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, when we do evaluations, instead of to everyone, if you see next to the word everyone, there's a chevron and up like a V. Click on that, and you can actually pick a person to send a message to. So everybody send a message to me. It could just be hi. So not everybody, but just pick me and send me a message. Where's the chevron? Mm -hmm. It's right next to the word everyone. It looks like a little oh, yeah, upside right. down V. And then you can pick. Oh, Kim, you know, you, when you have your husband on with you, it gets to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Hey, Ann, I had a quick question. Yes. Since I'm going to be speaking, I'm just a little concerned. I'm, I, I'm seeing that I look okay in this light, or is this light better? Is that too much glare? Well, either way is okay. Turn okay. that light off again. Let's see what it looks like mm. off. Oh, oh, I just lost you. Where are you? Let's see. All right. Yeah, you're you're good both ways. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just keep it this way. Then it's easier for me to see the everything on the screen. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, you're good. Mm -hmm. All right. How come okay. I don't see Kent? All of a sudden, I don't see. Oh. There he is. We have so many people I had to scroll. Okay. Hopefully everybody figured out how to do that chat box. And we will have time after each speaker. Okay. Now we can use hand signals to communicate. If you can't hear someone, you can yeah. cup your hand and maybe they'll get the hint that you can't hear them. Uh, you can do thumbs up to show that you are showing approval. Thumbs down if you want to show disapproval. Now for, for timing, because we do have the ability to use virtual time cards, but not everybody has the right kind of background for that. So Lori, I'd like you to demonstrate how we're going to do timing. Yes, for timing, I will be using hand signals. Does everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So for Catherine and Kent, uh, I will give you the five minute when you have five minutes left. So that'd be at the 10 minute mark. Three minutes when you get three minutes left. And then the fist when you are at 15 minutes. And then Jim. So Jim, it'll be, um, Jim, it'll be two minutes for your five to seven, um, one minute when you're at six, and then fist when you hit seven. Okay, thank you. And it can be helpful if you're the speaker, if you pin the timer like we talked about so that you can always see the timer when you're speaking. The theme, find your buried treasure. When I decided on this theme, it was a few weeks ago, and I thought, I'll just tie in with the theme for our spring conference. Well, that was before the spring conference got canceled. But we all have an opportunity to find a buried treasure in this situation 
with the coronavirus. And I created a poll. We're going to see if it works. What has been your buried treasure with the changes the coronavirus outbreak has brought to your life? I'm going to launch this poll and you can click on as many things as you want. So hopefully you see the poll and click on the things that have been your buried treasure. What do you see? And when you're done voting, you hit submit. For hobbies, reading and relaxing, yes. Saving money, eliminating <laughs> things. Yeah. Okay. Saving money on gas and working from home. Okay. Here's a learning and getting better new ways to communicate Zoom. Here's one, a chance to really declutter. Yep, absolutely. Who do I hear like that's talking it out loud? It's kind of cute. <laughs> okay, so nine out of 12 people have voted. I'm gonna give you a few more seconds to finish up your voting. And then now there's only one person who hasn't voted. You don't have to vote if you don't want to, but uh, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we're ending the polling. I'm going to share the results now. So you should be able to see results. And the number one thing is learning and getting better at new ways to communicate, followed by saving money on gas and a and maybe reading loved ones and able to focus on a project. So I hope you're able to find your buried treasure in this situation. Okay, let me do this. So for our online meeting, our evaluation team will be the following. Our keynote evaluator, Lori Zebarth, and then for our contest speech, which Jim will be doing, we will have a round robin at the time we would do a normal evaluation. Our keynote evaluator will be Kim Windingland, and our timekeeper also will be Lori. And I'll ask each of them if they have anything particular that they are going to be evaluating on. Lori. For our first speaker, is there anything particular you'll be evaluating on for Catherine? Yes, for Catherine's speech, she has mentioned that she is not going to be running slides due to platform restrictions and she can't walk around the room. So she wants to have feedback on facial expressions, vocal variety, humor and crisp delivery. So those are the things I will be keying in on for this particular evaluation. Thanks, Diane. Great. For our keynote evaluator number three of Kent, Kim, our, what will you be looking for? Well, he is speaking out of storytelling manual, the touching story. And the speaker is can prepare and present a original story to invoke emotions. So everyone, we need to be emotional during his talk. <laughs> And I get to evaluate how well he did that. All Back right. You. Thank you. So now we will have our first speaker in just a moment. A moment. Have you ever noticed how many people have dogs and the bond they share? Whether young or old, there's nothing quite like the unconditional love that you receive from your furry friend. But has it occurred to you that they also are teaching you valuable lessons that are applicable both personally and professionally? Through years of involvement with Can Do Canines, now as a board member, Catherine Hoy has seen firsthand the powerful positive impact a dog can have on a life. There's a bond that's formed between humans and their canine companions that stays long after their furry friends are gone. Through her own rekindled memories, Catherine has learned some four-legged wisdom. She hopes these lessons will resonate with you and will be readily applicable in your day-to-day -day life. Four-legged wisdom, Catherine Hoy. 
-hmm. And over to you, Catherine, remember to unmute yourself. And I believe Catherine is going, I'll, un I'll unmute you. Okay, I can't unmute you. I did. Oh, good. I unmuted me. Now I'm trying to share my screen. There we go. <laughs> this one, I think, there. Can you see it? Yes. Excellent. Okay, here we go. Rock and roll. Well, hi, everyone. And I really appreciate you being here. This is really a fun presentation for me. And in times like this, we really need all the wisdom that we can get. We're hearing so many, so many bad news, so much bad news coming at us that I thought this would be a great way to think about some good ideas and some wonderful lessons to be learned from our pets. Since we're virtual, I can't really see how many people have pets currently or have owned dogs, but whether you currently have a dog or not, there are lessons that they can teach us. So this evening, I am going to talk about five lessons that my three dogs taught me for life and business. I'd like to introduce you to dog number one, and that is Bootsy. Bootsy's not moving. There we go. Meet Bootsy. Here she is. Bootsy's a Chihuahua, as you can see. Maybe you're not familiar with dog breeds. But Bootsy was with me through most of my early school, so kindergarten, maybe up until high school. And we had a little game that we would play together. I would come up to her when she was on her little pillow, all relaxed, and I would go like this on her nose. And she would growl and get all upset. And then I'd pull my hand away and give her a hug. And so that was one of our little games that we played. And what that lesson was, was that we can, ooh, oh, these are sticky. Growl, that is we can get mad, but we need to get over it. There's plenty of things out there right now to make us angry. We've got the economy, we've got jobs, we've got, we don't have traffic because nobody's out. It can be tensions at home, but we need to let that go. Because when we hold on to anger, it keeps us from being as creative as we can be. It keeps us from catching the good stuff, enjoying the time that we have. So lesson number one is growl and get over it. Now, as you saw, Bootsy was a small dog. And the second lesson that she taught was improvise and get noticed. Now, how does a Chihuahua do that? No, she didn't run around with a hat and sunglasses on, that's for sure. But what she would do when we put her out, if we forgot about her, she would just sit on the front step. There had to be a way for her to tell us, I wanna come in. So what she would do is she would jump against the screen door up and up. So we would either see her or hear her or both. Now, how does that relate to us? Well, we have a lot of people wanting our attention. They want our attention via Facebook, via LinkedIn, emails, in-person phones. And if we're running a business, we need to get their attention as well. We need to learn how to improvise and we learn, we need to learn how to get noticed. So that was lesson number two from Bootsy. Next, I'd like you to meet Katie. If Katie would show up. She's not showing up, you guys. Oh. Okay, well, sometimes she will. So Katie was a tricolor collie and she would, we got her as a puppy. And as a puppy, one of her favorite things to do was to 
teeth on the siding of the house. She would pull the siding off the house and chew on it. That did not make my dad happy. Not one iota. There she is. So therefore, he couldn't discipline her until he could catch her in the act. When he did, he wasn't punitive, but he got her attention. And it was his way of disciplining her that turned her into a very well-trained dog. When we moved to a new home at the other end of town, he was able to walk her around the perimeter of the yard and just simply tell her, stay, don't leave. And she didn't, which was quite the feat because we had school kids going by during the school year in the morning and in the afternoon. They could play with her in the yard, which was great, but she wouldn't leave. So that gave her free run of the yard. It was awesome. So the lesson from Katie is discipline is opportunity. If we think about this personally, the more we discipline ourselves to do the work, whether it's to keep our physical health up so we're strong and we have the stamina to endure, whether it's preparing for things like this, for or knowing our product and sharing it with our clients and our prospects in a very confident manner, the more disciplined that we are, the greater our opportunity. Katie also had lesson number four, which was you don't have to follow the crowd. With the kids going back and forth, they certainly would have loved to take her to school. But if she went with, not only would she be in trouble and get disciplined, she would, she would lose her freedom, really. And for us, what we need to remember is if we want to be a leader, if we want to be seen as someone who is a great resource, who has wisdom, we can't follow the crowd. We've got to be our own person and it can be tough. And I remember my mom telling me years ago, you don't have to follow the crowd. Well, there were some times I just flat out wanted to hang out with the crowd. But we have to keep in mind that and we're following the crowd, we're just going to blend in. And that's probably not what we want to do. <clears throat> Finally, I'd like you to meet Bear. As you can see, Bear is a pretty big Doberman. We also got Bear as a puppy. And my goal when we got her, this was when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, is I said, I want a Doberman. I want a dog that will protect the household, that will protect us as a family. So there she is, our great protector. This dog was the biggest teddy bear I have ever seen. We could not get her to bark. We could not get her to growl at all. We would even try to trick her into it. We'd leave the house. We'd drive out of the driveway. We'd have neighbors come over and ring the doorbell. She wouldn't growl. She wouldn't bark. Sometimes she just wouldn't even get up. However. Look at that dog. Hmm. And her lesson, how you appear matters. Yes, indeed. Now think about this. If you had Bear and Katie next to each other, which one would you feel more comfortable approaching? Katie, for sure. The Collie. That's a given. What we need to think about is how do we show up? When we walk into a room, remember seven seconds to make a first impression. So how are we showing up? Maybe the day will come again when we can shake hands. How is that handshake? How is the material you're presenting? How are you standing? Are you looking people in the eye? How you appear matters. It's very important. And even though we told our friends when they would come over, if Bear was in the yard, that it was fine, they weren't gonna buy that story. They just said, ah, it's okay, we're good. Don't forget that when you're getting ready to go into a meeting or making that first impression. 
So let's do a recap. The five lessons my dogs taught me, growl, but get over it. Improvise and get noticed. Discipline is opportunity. And remember, you don't have to follow the crowd. And finally, how you appear matters. So what lessons have your dogs taught you for life and business? Thanks. Thank you, Catherine. Now we are going to have one minute of silence and what you're supposed to do in that one minute of silence, which I'll start in just a moment, is to write in the chat box directly to Catherine, not to everybody, some helpful comments on things she already does well and maybe some areas she might do something differently. So that time for one minute will start now. All right. Whoops, wrong, went too fast. Our next speaker is going to practice his contest speech. When he originally wrote this speech, he thought he would be giving it on a big stage. Well, like many things in life, that all changed with the coronavirus. So he is working today on practicing his presentation on a virtual format and still trying to keep some of his staging. Excuse me. Did someone have a question before I How do on? I send that note to Catherine? Did you actually write it for her? Just I hit, did. Just did hit return. It. Did you hit return? Send. Oh, do I hit return? Or send, one of those two. Oh, got it, okay, thanks, sorry. Okay. okay, no problem. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. And for this video, I'm going to pin it so that it will def, or I'm gonna spotlight it so it will be big for everybody. Our next speaker, Jim Emery, John Newton's hymn. John Newton's hymn, Jim Emery. My country is sick. It has an illness that kills tens of thousands of people every year. Just last year, 49 people died of this illness in my hometown of Minneapolis. And last year, 465 people died of this illness in my home state of Minnesota. And nearly 40,000 people died of this illness in my home country, the United States of America. And yet this illness has been all but eradicated in the rest of the civilized world. Now, it's not the coronavirus. This one has been with us much longer. The illness 
is gun violence. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. So where are you on this subject? Is your sound like this over on the left? What's wrong with you? Don't you get it? Guns are killing people every year. How can you ignore it? Don't you care? What's, what's wrong with you, you, you fascist? Or maybe it's like this on the right. What's wrong with you? Don't you get it? Don't you know the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution? You're trying to take away my family's only protection from bad guys with guns. Don't you care? What's wrong with you, you, you communist? That saved a wretch like me. And then maybe you had a doubt about whether that person on the other side really is a wretch. Maybe I don't get it. He's not a bad man. He, he's got a, a great family and, and a wonderful house out in the suburbs. He volunteers at his church, but how can he believe what he believes when it's so obviously wrong? Or maybe it's like this. Maybe I don't get it. He's not a bad guy. He's got a lovely wife and two great kids and a big house in the city. He volunteers at the local soup kitchen. But how can he believe what he believes when it's so obviously wrong? I'm gonna stop for a minute, I lost signal. When in doubt, turn your phone off. I once was lost, but now am found. And then when you're feeling most lost, you found a revelation. But this is the United States of America. We're the biggest, richest, most powerful country in the world. We invented the automobile and the airplane and the computer. We kicked the Nazis butts in World War II. We put a man on the moon. We can accomplish anything we want to. And then you applied that, that revelation to other diseases. We are the richest, most powerful country in the world. We, we cured smallpox and polio, and we've nearly cured AIDS. We saved the bald eagle from extinction, and we saved thousands of lives by making our cars safer. We really can accomplish anything we want to was blind but now i see and now that you see you share your vision with the other side so we agree we can accomplish anything we want to yes we can accomplish anything we want to so we can cure this, this gun violence illness if we want to. 
Yes, we can do it if we want to. If we want to. Amazing grace, how sweet, how sweet the sound. We can cure it if we want to. That saved a wretch like me. lost oh but now now i'm found we can do it if we want to was blind but now if we want to I see. Let's get together. Let's get started. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Jim. That was a challenging staging for that particular, particular speech. I and I to turn my phone off. <laughs> That's all right. All right. So now I'm going to go back to just this screen and we will take one minute. You will have op an opportunity later on to give Jim feedback in our round robin evaluation. But for right now, you have one minute to type some comments in the chat box. Remember to pick, let's see, which one should we pick, Jim? You have yourself here three times. Jim's contest speech, I guess. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> Actually, uh, I logged one of them out. The, this is really Jim when it's gone now. So. On. All right, our third speaker this evening is speaking in our club for the very first time, a relatively new member. We all have stories through which we've lived. They have made us who we are and how others have seen us. Sometimes our stories are shared by others. But the most relevant stories are those we tell about ourselves. Only you know what you were feeling. Only you know how the stories impacted you. Only you can tell your story. Distinguished Toastmaster Kent Hawks is a professional speaker, a performer, and a U.S. Army veteran with more than 20 years of service. He is an experienced storyteller and inspirational speaker who uses his stories of personal service and family bonds to reinforce the importance of sharing stories. He teaches that through sharing our stories, we gain a better understanding of the legacies that we leave behind. Tell your story. Kent Hawks. Okay, now I've got to cancel this video and let me find Kent real quick. And I'm going to make him be the spotlight video. All right, Kent, go ahead. Who wants to speak up and who wants to go in front and give the eulogy? So that was the question asked by the pastor. 
whereas we and my mother, my brothers, and my sister all got together to plan my father's funeral. And I'd been a Toastmaster for about six years at that point. I figured nothing to it. I can do this. I, I, know, I know enough about how to speak in public. I'm confident enough to do this. And so I said, yes, I'll do that. And my sister looked at me. Yes, I was the upstart. I was the youngest. I was the one who always spoke up when sometimes when I wasn't probably supposed to. But I spoke up and everyone looked at me. And they thought, I guess if anyone's going to do it, it would be you. So we agreed. I would give up, get up and give the eulogy for my father. And as I started to prepare for it, I had a few questions for myself. And I started looking at what I actually knew about my father and what he had done in his lifetime. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I'm here to talk to you right now, right now about my search for stories and what those stories taught me and what learning about those stories taught me. I grew up in a small town. My parents were middle class. They struggled. They, they kept us fed. They kept us without really needing anything all through our lives. My father was a, was a simple carpenter. He worked with my uncle. Most of, my, most of my life, and I just knew that he was a carpenter. He was a man who did a good day's, full day's pay. Occasionally he got hurt. Occasionally he um, went out and rewarded himself by, by going out and playing golf. But he was a man of very few words when I knew him at home. As Dan Fogelberg said in The Leader of the Band, an homage to his own father, he earned his love through discipline, a thundering velvet hand. His gentle means of sculpting souls took me years to understand. And that, that applied to my relationship with my father. I didn't really know where he was coming from necessarily because he had stories and I didn't. So I, list, I tried to listen whenever I could. But the stories he shared were very few and far between. So as I started to look around that small town and talk to some of his friends, I went to the church, I went to some Masons. I only had about two or three days, but in a small town of 3,000, it really doesn't matter how many people you have to look up because they're all only a mile away. So I looked up a few of his friends that I knew from the Masons, from his work, from the church, and everyone admired this man. I mean, I knew he was dead, but everyone admired him. And I, I guess that's just what I expected. When we went to the lodge hall for whatever events were going on, when the families were invited to come along and we had these big potluck dinners, you know, it's Minnesota. We, we weren't Lutheran, but we had potlucks all the time anyway. But my father, was a very respected man and he was called upon to speak and to lead and to guide other people and I learned to respect the man that he was and I just knew that he was someone that I admired but as I went around and talked to the men and women of the town I found out that he was not only this man admired in the short term in the here and now he was admired throughout the state of Minnesota. He was called up on to, to travel and to visit and to speak at other, at other Mason chapters. He was called upon to do other things with the church on a statewide basis. And I didn't know this. I knew he went out of town on occasion, but he was just a, a middle-class guy who worked and he came home and he brought everything home and we had a good life. I knew that he was in the army, excuse me, I knew he was in the Navy in World War II. He grew up with seven brothers and one sister in the Iron Range. He, when he was old enough and when the war came out, World War II came around, he and four of his brothers went off and joined the service. My father joined the Navy. His, his stories of that came out usually only when he was sitting around. And 
I don't know exactly how many stories he told, but I only remembered two of them. And one of them was when he was traveling across North Africa. He was in the Navy, but for some reason he was in North Africa. They landed in on the Western shore and they traveled across North Africa to supply, provide supply and support to the troops as they moved in through the Mediterranean. I found out later through looking at his service papers to get some more information, I found out that he was not only in North Africa, as a, he was a, in the Navy, so I figured he did something on board a ship. But when he was in Africa, he was able to go from North Africa up into Italy, and he was, he was an aircraft maintenance mechanic, and he was able to support the troops as they provided support to the attacks as they went up through Italy and up, th up to attack Nazi Germany. Up to the time I looked at that paperwork, when I was preparing a eulogy, I found out my father had worked on airplanes. I never knew that he'd done anything but fly in an air a commercial airplane. That's a part of his life that he never really talked about. And I sort of wondered why he didn't share those stories. But I was a kid. I took a lot of things for granted and I went off to college. And when I came home, we had our disagreements because I was young and I was one in 20, as they say, and no use to talk to me because I knew everything and my parents weren't so smart. As we all know that that knowledge changes over the time and your parents get a lot smarter when you get older, at least mine did. But as I grew older and into my, into my own, I realized that I didn't have the experiences to share with my father. And so I moved on to the next level and just went off to find my own thing, do my own thing. I joined the army and I decided to find my own stories and get some experiences I, that I could share with my father. As I did so, I was able to travel abroad. I traveled to Germany. I traveled to a few other places. I traveled to Turkey. I was able to, over the next couple of decades, as I did my military service, I was able to travel to Russia on an on a educational excursion. I was able to travel several other countries in Europe. And I was able to learn a little bit more about the people who I once who had, I had once been adversaries with, and I was able to work with some of them actually in through my military experience. And then came the time when I got called to active duty. In 2004, I was called to active duty for a year and a half, and I got, had the opportunity to go to go abroad. I talked to a lot of different people. I was actually in Iraq for a, a portion of that time. I knew what it was like to have mortars going off in the background on a daily basis. I knew what it was like to know that things could be tenuous. And I found out on that experience what it was to lose a friend who drove away in a convoy in the morning and didn't come back. I knew what it was to learn to, to, to pay attention in life and to use the experiences I had and to grow through those experiences. And when I came back, I had stories that I could share with my father who went through those experiences a long time ago. And I had a little under, a bit more understanding now of why he was not anxious to share the, some of the stories that he had of the friends he had lost, of the experiences. But unfortunately, when I got back, it was to a father who a year before had had a stroke while I was overseas. He never regained, he never fully regained his speech. He never was able to, to give a good, a full sentence again. A few words here and there. And I tried to tell him my stories and share my stories and learn who this man was. And, now I had some experience to share, experiences to share with him, but I couldn't share those experiences because he wasn't there. He couldn't listen. 
but I still tried to share with him when I could. In six months, but six months after I was born, after I returned, I returned to a five month old uh, daughter. I was able to come home for her birth, but I, and then I went back again. I came home and I had a five month old daughter. And my experiences all changed. My reason for things changed, for knowing things changed. And I could no longer find out the stories from my father. I had to ask his brothers. Six months after my return from the army, at Christmas time, he and my daughter spent uh, several hours talking. She was 11 months old and he was uh, in his incapacitated state. But they had a conversation, talking in whatever language it was they were talking. And they, were, they looked like they were communicating and having a good old time, gibbering at each other. And part of my heart broke because I couldn't tell him my, I couldn't learn his stories. I could still tell him mine. But the next month after that, in January of 2006, he passed away. Now that I had stories to share, now that I had things to do, I couldn't share them with him anymore. But I came to the immediate realization that the other person in that picture from Christmas was my now one-year-old daughter. She was one year old and I swore to myself, she would know who I was. She needed to know my stories to know who I was. And there's no, only one way she would ever know that. I had to tell her. I had been a storyteller in, in a storytelling club for several years. And I, would, I couldn't hold back the stories. I had to start telling them. And as I told the stories, I wrote them down. I revisited them and told them again at different meetings. I've recorded a few already and I'm going to record more. And I need to know that I need to record those stories and share them with my daughter so she will know who I am. She'll know who I am and what questions she can ask. Matter of fact, just tonight I was watching a television show with her and I made a comment about something and she goes, well, what? My now 15 year old daughter knows that there are certain things about me she's going to have to ask to learn but hopefully I won't be so stubborn as to not share them with her. And hopefully I'll be able to get a lot of these stories down. The reason I'm telling you this today is I, I want you to think about as you, as you go from here today, think about what stories you have, what stories you wish you had learned from others in your life, stories that you wish you had told to others in your life. And just stories that need to be told. Every one of us has them, whether we think about them or not. But remember, as was in my introduction, a story is going to be told from your perspective only by you. Only you can tell that story. So please, tell your story. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Kent. That was an icebreaker, too, for our club. We got to find out a little bit about you. All right, so I'm going to cancel the spotlight video and go back to this screen. And now you'll have about a minute to put into the chat box under Kent a helpful comment or two for Kent's speech. You have one minute.
All right, the minute is up. And send your comments to Kent. Now a fun part of the meeting, in addition to hearing our speakers, is table topics. And we have our topic master today of Sarah Bateman. Sarah, let me unmute you, or you have to, oops, I just <laughs> muted you. I didn't mean to, sorry. <laughs> I was unmuting you myself as you were muting me, so. <laughs> okay. So today we're gonna think about the treasures and. You're still on, sorry. I'd like to know what treasures have you found because of social distancing? Therese? Sorry? What, what treasures you have ask you? Me? Yes. What treasures have I found as a result of social distancing? Yeah. Very few. <laughs> <laughs> I am an Audi, an extrovert. I want to be around people. This is killing me. I think it's just terrible. Um, I'm texting people and uh, emailing and sending things, but it's just it's just not the same. I, I haven't found anything really redeeming about it yet. Yeah. I um, wish that none of this had happened. I, I was in Egypt when all of this stuff started to come down, and uh, there were it was interesting on that trip that a couple of times I felt like I was the only grown up in the room. I was making decisions. <laughs> And better using my better judgment and, and inspiring and leading other people to go along with my opinion and what we should do. Uh, so some of those things were really getting to me already before I even made a aborted uh, return to the United States when uh, I learned that the Cairo airport was going to close and we had to get out while the getting was good. So I, I don't have a real good opinion about that. I wish I could say something really optimistic and positive, but don't have it. Okay, thank you. What treasure do you possess that we would be pr surprised about, Charlie? I mute myself, hold on. I unmuted, oh, okay. The treasure that I have is persistence. And in this time, even though I, I had a number of things canceled that I was really looking forward to, I have turned that energy into uh, uh, better organizing my sometimes cluttered office and also persisting in um, improving my, uh, my, my presentation I hope to give uh, in the future. So it's persistence. Persistence, thank you. What treasures have been unearthed because of hardships you've had to deal with? Lori? What treasures have had to have been unearthed because of hardships you've had to face? I would say the biggest treasure that I unearthed uh, in a hardship was actually finding myself. Following my divorce, I didn't think anything would get any better when I was going through it. Things seemed pretty dark, seemed pretty dim. I felt pretty unloved, pretty embarrassed by the situation. And I didn't know that I was going to pull out from that. I spent a lot of time in bed I spent a lot of time on my knees praying, and I 
just didn't see a light, a light at the end of the tunnel. And something snapped for me when I was sitting alone in the dark. And it, it's actually part of the speech I'm giving right now in the contest that I went into the bathroom and splashed some water on my face and looked up in the mirror and didn't recognize the person that was staring back at me. I, I, I actually thought somebody was in my house. I was alone. Um, boys were off with their dad on an overnight and I actually thought somebody was in my house. I was, I was terrified. And to not recognize myself, I had become so unrecognizable in my life and knew that that something needed to change. And it was that transformative moment. And as horrible as that time was, I would say that that moment changed my life. And I am a new and better version of myself because I went through that time. Thank you. Thank you. What is your favorite treasure, Kim? You need to unmute yourself. Someone did it for me. Now can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's good. Well, I have some awesome treasures. That's for sure. One is sitting across the hall from me in front of another monitor, someone that um, I ran into at a beer keg, and we were the only <laughs> two not drinking beer. But I did discover later that she loves slow gin fizz and also discovered how quickly she could be affected <laughs> by slow <laughs> gin fizz. And I will say here in front of everybody, that I did not take advantage of her that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So the temptation was there, but because I did not take advantage of her, she became my long-term treasure. And now that, there were many other treasures, like her daughter in New York. Boy, she is really a card. And just fun watching her ready to duke it out with a boy twice her age, you know, fearless in that way, but then fearful in many other ways. It just seemed so <laughs> contradictory as far as her character. So, yeah, I have some awesome treasures. So I, I love what I have in front of me. Back to you, Adam Table Topic Master. Thank you. Um, Lisa, would you like a question? Okay, you'll need to unmute. Okay, your question is, what treasure do you have that you didn't recognize it was a treasure at first? Mm, Madam Table Topics Master. Well, I think we all have hidden treasures. You know, sometimes it's like an archeological dig. And I don't know, I think throughout my life, I've, I've dug and dug and found stuff. You know, like how a dog will dig and find bones and fun things to play with and, and distractions. And it was probably, probably in 1990 when my sister died. She died in a car accident. And her last living kind act was to give her heart away. She was a organ donor. And it taught me about kindness. And I've dedicated my life to kindness. And I think that it was a buried treasure for many, many years. And I didn't really even know it was a treasure. But I ended up starting a restaurant called the Kindness Cafe. And it was because of her. And really cool stuff happened. And now I work with the airline. And I do a kindness campaign with the airline. And I wrote a book about kindness. And and hope to share it more with the world as it's getting translated in different languages. And, and um, I feel like I've just, I, I, I'm rich beyond measure and it's because of kindness. Thank you. Madam Toastmaster, the table topics master. <laughs> yes. Mary, would you like a question? Okay, you'll need to unmute yourself. Okay. 
What treasure are you looking for now? Well, I guess this coronavirus is is putting me outside of what I want to do, you know, doing things, getting out of the house. And I, right now I'm looking for a way to get my car fixed or get an oil change in that. And I want, I probably don't want to get out to do it, but I was hoping it would warm up and I could, if I was at the car dealer, I could walk around outside while it's being worked on and I wouldn't have to be it's so inconvenient. So that would be my treasure I'm looking for. I'm looking for some warmer weather. No, it's only been about 30 some degrees here today and it's just, just a little bit chilly for wanting to walk around. That's my treasure, springtime. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else? I've tried to scroll through all the pictures, but I can't see everybody at one time. If there's anybody else who would like a question. Okay, I believe I'll, I'll hand it back to you, Diane. Actually, go ahead and let Kent take a question. I saw his hand go up. Oh, okay. Uh, Kent. Why are treasures important in our life? Oh, let's see. Well, thank you for the question, Sarah. Treasures are very important in our lives because we have to have something to hold on to. Just as story, I, I pointed out, stories are my treasures because they're a way that I can communicate my memories because memories are so intangible until we actually i know you we've had experiences together in in classes and things and just the experience of putting a story into words and sharing it yes. it allows us to actually have something to treasure to hold on to to hold up to a standard of what's going on around us the good stories about good stories of things that have happened to us over time things that have Remembering the good old good old days or maybe just the days of when we felt better toward each other or we did things together with each other before this time of sequestration right now during this self quarantine. You hear a lot of people talking about finding new ways to get out and finding new ways to meet with people just just as we in the club have done finding a way to share the information to still share what we know is a blessing. Toastmasters is a treasure for us, for me anyway, because it's an opportunity for me to share with other people. And now I don't even have to leave my home to do it. I'm looking forward to a time when I can get out of my home to do it. But okay. one of the, we have the blessings of all this technology. We have the blessings of the people around us. We just have all the blessings that we need. We just have to put them in, the, in a version that we can actually utilize them and understand what is going on around us. Hopefully, we'll be able to grow from that and appreciate those treasures in our lives. Back Thank you. Up. Thank you. And with that, I'll hand the meeting back to Diane. Thank you very much, Sarah. So now we are going to have our evaluation session. I'm not going to keep this slide up because I like when we can see everybody. Just as a reminder, I'll call on the evaluators First, Lori, then we will do a round robin with Jim's speech, then we'll have Kim doing the evaluation of Kent's speech, and then we'll hear, hear our timekeeper's report. So we will start with the keynote evaluation that Lori will be doing of Catherine's speech. Well, thank you, fellow Toastmasters. Thank you, Diane. and. Great speech, Catherine. It's it's always fun to be able to to. I can't even see Catherine. Hold on, just a minute. I want to talk to Catherine. There she is. It's always fun to be able to to talk about animals. I think there's such a connection between animals and people, and to be able to 
look at these four-legged friends that that we love so much and really gain lessons from them. I think that the whole topic is really engaging and to really have lessons that we can all appreciate and take from it uh, were really great. I, I thought the, the growl and get over it, the um, improvise and get noticed, to discipline is an opportunity. You don't have to follow the crowd and and uh, how you show up matters. I think those are all great things we could we could use and take from that. And they all came from dogs. And what a what a terrific lesson. Uh, one thing that I noticed was that you started off with thanking everyone and appreciating them being there. Normally, I think you would have started with with the punch of with so many things going on right now that this is really a, a great fun lesson. And I think that might have been a stronger opening for you. Um, as far as the whole the whole using Zoom presentation, I think you did a great job of uh, being somewhat of a television reporter, if you will. So being able to look at the camera because that's where your audience is, but also breaking away. And you see news anchors doing this too. They'll do it between stories. They'll do it if they have a really long intro. They'll be talking, 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 and they will do a slight look away and look back up as a way to visually break because nobody would stare at you and talk at the entire time during a presentation. So I think you did a masterful job of, of doing that breakaway. Uh, one thing that I thought would be really helpful is to either uh, drop your chair or to lift your camera so we're more on that eye level, the camera is more at an eye level, um, or maybe a little above you, just um, so we're not looking up at you. Uh, that might give you a little more balance on, on how we, we see you in the screen. Vocal variety, I thought you uh, this you do a masterful job. I always feel like you're having a conversation with us versus uh, doing a speech to us. So I, I thought that was great. Your facial expressions, I thought this was an opportunity where you could have been a little more overemphasized as well because uh, normally you have more body actions. And as I thought about your other speeches, you have more body actions that go with, uh, this is an opportunity really to add some additional and maybe overemphasize a little bit on the facial expression since this is all we have to go with now. But overall, I, I think you had a really, just a, a, a terrific speech opportunity. I thought this was a great one to use in, in a Zoom meeting sort of setting. And I think this is one that, that will work for you going forward in, in future online meetings. Thank you. Back to you, Ms. Madam Toastmaster. Can't hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I didn't say anything important anyway. So <laughs> now we're going to have an opportunity to do a round robin evaluation for Jim. So what I'm going to do, just to make it easy for me, is I'm going to go in the order that I see people on my screen and I will call on you, and you don't give a full-blown evaluation. Maybe just mention a couple things that you think Jim might work on, or if there's something you thought was really great, you can mention that too. And we will start with Therese. Well, thank you, Jim, for your speech. I think you know that I love it. Um, I told you that the first time you gave this and encouraged you to, to go with this topic, and I think you've done it an excellent job with it. The only thing that I could think of is uh, when you're on camera doing it, be very, very aware of where your eyes are looking because every little glance shows up. And the other thing is, um, I'm not sure that the final extra ending was really needed. I think it ended and it didn't need that extra ending. It's a great talk, wish you well, well on it. Thanks. Thank you, Therese. And now we'll go over to Lori. Wait, let me un unmute yourself, Lori. Hi, Jim. I just want to say that I thought your vocals were the best I've heard so far. You were just in fine voice tonight, and I think you're in fine voice all the time, but for some reason tonight it seemed extra great. So 
that was terrific. I also liked how you had a little extra stage. I wasn't sure how this was going to work for you because you have such a physical, uh, visual, physical speech. Mm -hmm. So I really like the fact that you were able to set up a small stage for yourself and still maintain uh, the qualities of your speech that you really came forward on. But I would echo uh, Teresa's uh, uh, mention of watch where you're glancing to, to really maintain contact with that lens um, and then just break away um, on some of those other pieces. But the, yeah, it looked like you were trying to speak to an audience, a full audience in front of you and really the audience is us here in, in the little TV screen. But great job. I, I love it. I, you, you knocked it out of the park at the area and you're going to continue to do well. Thank you, Lori. And now we'll move on to Sarah. You can unmute yourself, Sarah. There we go. Jim, I, I like the powerful message and I like that it is what I call a hard speech. It's a speech that people try to not talk about the subject. And so I think that's why Regardless of the contest, I, I believe that's why it's important is because you have such a strong message that we really need to be thinking of right now and think listening to. Of course, you know, your your vocals are wonderful. They always are. But I think the, the message is what makes the speech for me. And so thank you. Great. All right, Charlie, a couple comments from you. Well, Jim, I, uh, again, it was a very strong message. Uh, it's given the fact that I have a friend who has a pawn shop and he said he has never sold so many guns in the last two weeks as he has now. I think you could also have that, that break with the phone. You could have said, that was a great uh, commercial break. And now back to the presentation. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Charlie. Kim and you. Jim, I was really impressed with how professional. Can everybody hear me? Yes. And okay, with how professional the speech came across. Because when I learned that you would have to do it by video, I thought, oh, this is going to be very interesting for your speech because you use the stage, the whole stage in your speech. And I will echo what some of the people said about watching where you're looking. I don't know if you want to put faces like on each side of your, uh, the lens and just kind of look a little bit off the lens to the right or to the left, but you're, you're going to be facing more forward towards lens. And something that I've noticed, I don't know if anybody else noticed, the sound quality became poor a couple of times. Maybe it was the internet on our side. And I don't know what the um, district is going to use to make sure that the technology is good. So I, I don't know if you know anything about that, Diane? No, I think it's going to be whatever people have in their own homes, unfortunately. Okay. All right, we're going to go on to Mary. Mary, do you unmute yourself and have a comment for Jim? I thought it was it was overall good. I didn't quite understand what the occasion was for, but I almost thought it was a little too theatrical with the stage, but I don't know. I didn't quite understand if it was just to us or if it's practice for another contest. Yeah, that's what it's for, Mary. He's practicing for a contest. Well, is this for the one in Paris, the big one? <laughs> oh, that would be awesome if, if he goes all the way to Paris, but yes. A couple levels to go before that. <laughs> is it a district contest or what? Well, the next level is division. Division? Okay. Well, thank you, Mary. And we will go on to Catherine. Comment, Catherine. Unmute yourself. Yeah. There we go. All right. I thought it was fabulous, Jim. And just hearing, well, well, first of all, I was super impressed with the fact that you had that whole stage set up. 
One thing I noticed, and I don't know, again, it, it was a technology, but when if you move too fast, you get blurry yeah. when you went from one side to the other. Mm-hmm. So that, and, and it was like, uh-oh. And, and like Kim mentioned, there was a little bit of distortion then in sound. I don't know, again, what uh, the district might use to to hold everyone into place. And then the the lighting over when you were, I'm looking at you, so you would have been on my left when you started out the side. You started out with, as you came over to the other, where your lighting is, it kind of shined on the side of your face a little bit more. So that that's really more around, and I don't know how they're gonna grade on that. But you know, the speech itself was awesome, but I would echo what Lori or Tree said. It was like a double ending. There was a, an ending opportunity, but other than that, fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And Kent, unmute yourself and give Jim a comment. Gotta unmute. Yeah, yes. Nice. Jim, I really, really liked what what you did, especially mixing the the musical vocals along with your regular spoken vocals. I'm a music, I, I'm a singer too. I didn't, I, I actually had that line from, I was toying with the idea myself of using the line from the song I had just to sing it out. But it's like, no, after your speech, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> or I'm not going to at this time. I mean, I'll take you on in the, I'll take you on in either contest anytime in the future. <laughs> but right. I'm looking forward to that. One thing I did find, and I thought it might have been a little of a technology issue also, was I thought you're, I know you're very good about planning your pauses and that you're, you're, you used a lot of very specific pauses, letting things sink in. And I think you did a really good job of that. But I think it was partly due to the technology. It seemed the pauses were too long. They were, it was like you did your pause and then there was a, a double pause. I think it, that might have been part of it. And that's really hard to time, especially with this technology lag we have. So. And I, I just suggest, you know, I know you're going to do this anyway, but I just suggest watching what you, what what did end up in this recording and then balance your balance it out with that. Because I think you might have to, if there's going to be an automatic lag, you might have to shorten your pauses just to give yourself the time window that you need. That's just what I had to say. Good job, by the way. Thank, Thank you, you, Kent. And Lisa, some comment that you might have for Jim. Yeah, excellent speech, Tim. I think that um, the vocal variety was nice. The, d- the expressions uh, were good. I would definitely take a look at what has meaning to you, the emotion that really brings out in the beginning, especially, and let it sink in. You know, lean into it. Maybe lean in a little bit when you're getting emotional. And if if there's an urgency, pick up the pace a little bit. Pick up the pace and let us run with you. But take us on that roller coaster ride with you, and be mindful of maybe you know that journey of of up and down, and that emphasis. But wow, what a beautiful speech! I, I see this as something that needs to be heard. And yeah, put your, put your heart into it because you've got something here that people do need to hear. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And just a quick note that I actually put in the chat, Jim, but it kind of applies to everybody. I would caution you against wearing white because it was very bright when you were talking and you might want to wear a blue shirt, something that's not going to glare quite as much as white. So just something to think about. All right, I don't wanna take up too much more time and we have another evaluation yet. We have Kim to evaluate Kent, Kim. Okay, Kent. It was, for me it was a moving speech because my own experience with my dad. But the two biggest emotions that I was getting out of the speech was number one, sadness when, coming around uh, the war experience, you know, because your father went to war and then you went to uh, Iraq yourself. So I got some of that. But the biggest thing that was getting out of the speech is the emotion of regret, not learning more about your dad or hearing stories from your dad about his experience while he was still around. So that that's the thing 
that came across to me the biggest. Now, in the manual, it talked about using dialogue you know, to help build the story and build some of the emotion. And I think that was potentially a lost opportunity where when you're your dad and your daughter were communicating, that would have been a wonderful opportunity to bring in some humor in this speech to mimic them communicating. That would have been hilarious to watch you do that. So it, it would have brought in a whole different facet into your speech by doing that. And I know we would have been very entertained. So that's one lost opportunity that I would um, have you consider to try next time. Now, Again, the biggest emotion was regret. And I would suggest when you came back and you started talking to your dad, trying to get more out of him, you kind of build that up as a struggle and that it wasn't really happening. And build it up to a climax where all of a sudden he's gone. And like, it's a totally lost opportunity. So I think about that with my dad. I wish I would have learned a little bit more. I remember being surprised when I was looking at photos and he was wearing this beret. And I asked him, so um, you're in the Army? And he said, yeah, I knew that. And I said, were you a Green Beret? He said, yeah. And I was like, oh, surprised. Like, that's a pretty big deal. He's a Green Beret. And I said, well, I didn't know that. You know, you didn't tell me that. I said, well, I mean, it's no big deal. A farm boy, I was strong, healthy, and I just went through the program. So, I mean, to make that type of discovery is kind of neat, and it would have been fun to learn more about him, and I know you were trying to portray that emotion yourself. So, it connect with me, and I enjoyed hearing your speech, and thank you for giving it, and I do challenge you to give this speech again, I want to hear you as your daughter and your dad communicating. <laughs> Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Kim. Well, we have had uncovered a lot of buried treasure tonight with the speeches we've had, with the comments, with table topics, with the evaluations. And now I'm going to ask our timer to give us the timing and then move into her role as club president immediately following for guest comments and announcements. Lori, to you. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Our timing went as follows. Catherine, for your speech, it was 10 minutes, 10 seconds. Jim, for your speech, it was seven minutes and 29 seconds. I think some of your time got eaten up with the technical issues. So um, <laughs> hopefully, yeah, the, I was kind of freaking out for you a little bit. And then I remembered you had the technical issues. So um, I'm, I'm certain your, your timing is, is, is spot on. Uh, Kent, your speech was 14 minutes and seven seconds. For table topics, I totally forgot. I, apparently, I was the timer during table topics. Sorry, Therese. <laughs> didn't, I was so excited when you mentioned Egypt. I'm so eager to hear about your, your excursion that I totally forgot to time you. So I'm saying minute 30, right on the button. Charlie, yours was 35 seconds. <laughs> Mine was 149. Kim, your answer was 132. Lisa, yours was 130. Mary, yours was 58 seconds. And Kent, your response was 153. And then we will move into our guest comments section along with introductions from the club and a little bit about our uh, who each of our members are and a little bit about what they speak on. So first I'm going to head over to our, our guests and see what kind of comments they have for us as a club today. And Lisa, can we start with you? Absolutely. What a wonderful opportunity to experience such a, a seasoned club. I really enjoyed the speeches. It was fun to hear a contest speech and be part of table topics. It's been a long time since I've been out of Toastmasters and 
Yeah, it's, it's fun to get back into it. And I am grateful for uh, you inviting me. So thank you. We're so glad to have you, Lisa, and we're looking at uh, having a Zoom membership as part of our club. So as we continue to get that together, we will certainly keep you in mind because I think that would be really fun to have you along with that. It was nice to look forward to it today, too. Uh -oh. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Mary, do you have any comments today on what you saw from our club? Uh, wow, it was, it, it was different. It, it seemed like it was well run. I think Diane did a superb job of keeping it. I don't know, just announcements and that. And it didn't seem like it had too many glitches, which I think you're going to have more glitches with this, with the internet and this until you get used to it too. This, I, I actually have to look to see if anybody has it, does anything wrong or anything. The only thing I saw was a certain person didn't black their name. If they go off the camera, then you go, you cut off your video with it. I'm not that you can't go off the camera, but like the dog barks, I'm going to go turn off my video and my sound and go, go downstairs. Okay. That's my okay. comment. All right. Thank you so much. Well, I, yes, in the interest of time, because we that time just snuck right up on us. Uh, we won't have a chance to do any round robin, but I will uh, pass it back over to Diane. She has, uh, we're going to get ready for our April meeting, which will take place on Monday, April 13th. Diane, can I return it to you at 7 sure. a.m.? And we'll talk a little bit about our uh, who's on the docket for that one. Great. Thank you, Lori. I just pasted into the chat who we already have on our agenda for our April meeting. Charlie, you're the Toastmaster, and no worries, I will still be the tech assistant, and we could even do a little trial run before that day. Table topics will be Kim, our grammarian will be Kenzie, who's not here right now. Therese will be giving the keynote. I'm kind of hoping it's about Egypt, but it could be on whatever you want. And Bo is going to be doing the workshop. Jim will be the tipster. Our keynote evaluator will be Catherine. Our workshop evaluator will be Sarah. I will be the timer, partly because I'm dying to try out my timing cards. I'll just show you as an example. So. I have, I can choose a different virtual background. So like there's green, you know, I can just use it as a background. So, so I wanted to try that out <laughs> and I'll be the tech assistant. That will be Monday morning on our regular meeting day and Kent can take a role. So actually Kent, uh, we don't have an open role right now, but what often happens is somebody is unable to make a meeting. So I will keep you in mind for if someone can't make the meeting. We are, what you could do, I have a role for you, Kent. This will make Charlie's job easier. Kent, how about being the general evaluator? And then Charlie doesn't have to do the general evaluator role. Does that work for you? All right. Is there anything else before we go? Thanks Thank to you. all of you for all the comments. This, uh, when there's a club with this much talent and uh, expertise in it, it's always great to get the comments back. Well, we're glad to help. I can't, oh, I wanted to ask Lori, when, yes. you're going to be in a division contest, right? For District I 6. I am. Is that something we can watch since it's going to be online? That's my hope. I'm, I'm hoping that is going to be the, the um, opportunity that we, I can send it out and have a link and have everybody attend virtually. Uh, the last thing I had heard was that there was a location. So um, I haven't heard anything about the virtual uh, setup on that yet. So I will share as soon as I have that. But I am going to be the, the Toastmaster for the Division 106 contest that Jim is going to be part of. So I'm excited about that. And We'll share links out on that as soon as that is available. And that's going to be next Thursday night, it April is. 2nd. April 2nd. 
So that will be very exciting and, and we'll send a link and we'll also put on our Power Talk Facebook page. If you want to follow that page, you can find out what we're doing and when. Does anyone else have anything before we adjourn? Well done, Diane. Superb. All right. Well, great. I, I have a question. You yes? said the district conference, you have a question, I have a question. You said the district conference is canceled. Isn't it just going virtual? Well, well, the, not the is whole it, thing is going virtual. Okay. What's going virtual will be the speech contests and the business meeting and the candidate showcase. But all other aspects will, uh, it will not be held physically. Pieces will be done virtually. Yes. And at a variety of times? I believe that the, the times will still be that weekend. If they do the humorous contest as a virtual contest, that would be Friday night. And then Saturday morning, I believe, I'm not entirely sure. Saturday will be both the international speech contest, maybe that's in the evening, and then the, the business meeting will be in the morning, I'm pretty sure. But all those times will be out. Bless you, Sarah. Sarah thank you. <laughs> All right, if that's I, it. Uh, Diane? Yes? Uh, where do we find the uh, recording? I will put it as on our YouTube channel. Okay. So I'm going to 